So as they are headed to the bridge, Pike discovers that Leanne, Nooney, and Singh is going to be his first officer and not Spock. Apparently, uh, Starfleet thought Spock was better off just staying in charge of science, and that was it. Yeah. Remember that time we chased you across the galaxy after we thought you murdered some folks? Yeah, that's uh, that's the other thing, isn't it? <laughs> this guy got his job back awful quick. <laughs> uh, that was a settlement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there was a lawsuit. <laughs> Defamation of character and whatnot, yeah. <laughs> they enter the bridge where they're met by Lion, Nooney, and Singh, and on the bridge are also Eric Ortegas, the helmsman, Jenna Mitchell, the uh, navigator, and communications officer, Nyoto Uhura. Yeah, Cadet Uhura. Cadet Uhura, yes. I like the recasting. So far, uh, Mitchell, we didn't get a lot of, but I like everybody we have seen up to this point. I think everybody's doing a great job. I enjoy all the actors and their roles. Ortegas seems to be the funnest character of the bunch so far. <laughs> yeah, she might replace uh, Jet Reno as my, my favorite character. Yeah, she yeah she might be the new Jet Reno. <laughs> so once they get all settled in, Pike takes over command, and they get the, cleared, the all clear to leave. And then Pike looks down at a piece of glass, and he sees gas station nachos looking right back at him. <laughs> Chris, I don't know if you guys eat a lot of gas station nachos over there, but you know, back in the 90s, we used to hear, and the thing is, when you eat gas station nachos, you, they repeat on you, and you keep seeing them over and over again. Well, you know, if it's like 12, 1, 2 in the morning, and uh, you still haven't made it to bed yet, 7-Eleven's a good choice for, for some chili cheese nachos. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> But when you have them, you're going to see them some more. You're like, you're going to constantly see them throughout the rest of the day. At least one more time. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So then Spock kind of has to get his attention, like, uh, Captain. (laughs) Good man. Hey, 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 man. (laughs) What what do you got going on there? So Pike's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or take us, take us out. And then he gets a herd to open a shipwide channel. And I, again, Pike makes a lot of jokes. I wonder how long they're going to be able to keep this this joking nature with him, because it's a deflection thing with him, I get a feeling. Yeah, that's what my therapist tells me. Oh, yeah, that's. I mean, that's what it is. <laughs> when you're having trouble coping, you just start making jokes, you know? Yeah. But he says that he hopes no one was caught with their hair wet or their pants down. <laughs> and then he kind of talks him through, uh, you know, hey, so Starfleet detected a warp signature, and we sent out a team for first contact. We haven't heard back from this team that was aboard the USS Archer. But hey, you know, everything's going to be cool. Nobody's going to die. <laughs> I love how he points this out. Hey, nobody's dying today. Uh, this isn't going to be anybody's last day. It's, it's going to be cool, guys. So just go back and dry your hair. <laughs> yeah, that was a, I feel like that was a weird statement to make. I mean, I guess in his headspace, it might not have been weird, but just hearing him say that over the whole intercom system, I was like, that's a, that's a weird promise to make. Yeah, because you kind of get the feeling. That, I mean, this feels like it would be right after the um, the Rigel and Talos thing. Because when they were headed to Talos, it was right after they left Rigel and they lost a bunch of crew members. And you get the feeling that like, oh, I I forgot about that year where I was captain of the Discovery, and I'm flashing back to that you know that time on the Enterprise now. Yeah, I mean, again, with their lack of callbacks, man, I still have trouble putting this into a, like, I know there is an established timeline here, but given given the mentions of stuff in the order they're mentioned in, it just always throws me off. Because there's another spot near the end of the episode where it kind of throws off some timeline stuff. Yeah, because, I mean, it kind of seems like they're just they're just leaning into more of it being a sequel to Star Trek. But not really referencing, you know, the original pilot or Discovery very much. Just kind of real vague mentions of it. 